Aloha and welcome to Business in Hawaii with Reg Baker. We are broadcasting live from the downtown studios of Think Tech Hawaii in the Pioneer Plaza. We are a show that broadcasts live every Thursday from 2 to 2.30 and cover topics of interest to businesses in Hawaii. We try to highlight success stories of both individuals and businesses to dispel the thought that uh, you can't make it in Hawaii. You can make it in Hawaii. It may not be easy and there are challenges, uh, but it is possible and there are a lot of people who are making it work. Uh, in business to be successful, it's not how much you make, but how much you keep. And a big part of the expense of a business, of course, is gonna be taxes. And so today we're gonna to be talking a little bit about uh, the update on the tax situation here in Hawaii. And, and we might, if we have time, touch a, a little bit on the federal level, although there's a lot of questions there. And I've got uh, the Tax Foundation, which uh, has Tom Yamachika as the president uh, and probably one of the most knowledgeable people in the state on taxes in Hawaii uh, and has been following this for quite a number of years. Uh, and he's got a, an update that might be a little scary, at least it was for me. So Tom, welcome to the show. It's good to have you back. Thanks for having me on the show. Um, now, you, you've been with the Tax Foundation for quite some time, haven't you? Uh, since the beginning of 2014. 2014, but you were on the board for a while before that? Or? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, so you've had an affiliation with them for a while. That's right, and I've been following taxes for a very long time, uh, for 10 or 15 years before that. All right, so 10 or 15 years of watching, you know, the, the process, the, the sausage making routine at the, the legislature on how these bills are created and passed. And, and they get, to me, a little bit even more confusing when you start talking about taxes. And I guess uh, it's a very sensitive issue, not only with me, but with a lot of people, because it's essentially taking money out of my pocket putting it into their pocket and they do me the benefit of spending my money for me. That's right. And so, you know, I think today, more than maybe in years past, it's important to have the Tax Foundation and you keeping an eye on this, primarily because right now the, the Senate really doesn't have much of a balance out there. I mean, with, with Sam Sloan being gone, there's really no balance in the Senate to keep an eye on things, and everybody knows how vocal Sam was about taxes. Yeah, certainly Sam uh, uh, occasionally made comments about, you know, various issues of importance, including tax issues, and, and, and he uh, you know, said a lot of things on the Senate floor, uh, a lot of things that that uh, the media picked up on and you know, really raised the uh, education level of, or an awareness level of a lot of people. Well, and that's, and that's the, what we try to do too. And that's the key word is the awareness. People, you know, of course, you know, vote our, our elected officials in and, and vote new ones in. Uh, and they just need to be aware of what's going on and, and whether they agree with it or not. Yeah, too uh, often uh, many people, including legislators, they, they don't know the nuances of a particular measure and they just kind of follow other people. Well, and that's, that's how we end up with some interesting situations, you know, some of which need to be fixed later and, and they find that's not gonna work. But, you know, I, I've been trying to watch what's going on here locally uh, and there seems to be an awful lot of activity going on uh, you know, over at the, uh, the, the legislature on all these different measures. and. You know, some of them are pretty significant. Uh, you know, there's, you know, and, and one of them, and I might jump around a little bit, but one of them that I think a lot of people is watching uh, is the rail tax and, and some of the different options that are coming into that. I mean, you know, we, we already knew that rail was gonna be very expensive and we were having a challenge funding it. Um, and then we keep increasing the budget over and over and over again uh, and trying to figure out how that's gonna get funded. Um, and now they're taking what they had sold as a temporary tax and they're, they're planning on doing, making it permanent. Yeah, a, a matter of fact, uh, we, were, we were watching a legislative hearing that happened, I think, on Wednesday, uh, where th the hearing was on a bill to simply get rid of the 10% that the, that the state is now skimming off. And, and we thought that was the only item that was the, on the agenda, but you know, uh, the mayor comes in, the, uh, uh, you know, the city council folks come in, and their theme was, we need it perpetual. We need it perpetual. We need mm. it you know, in perpetuity. 
so it, they, they want to extend it just a little bit from 2027 to forever. <laughs> Forever, and, well. and, but that's what they're focusing on. They're not focusing on the issue at hand, which is the you know how much the how much the state's going to steal from it. Well, and see, that's that's I, I think kind of where it gets a little murky is that you know people want to make this a permanent tax and and keep it forever, and in order to do that, they're willing to give up some of it, share some of that, you know, uh, call it what you want, you know. Uh, a skim or a bribe or whatever to the state to allow them to uh, pass this and make it a permanent tax. If they get enough of it, then they'll they'll do that. But there's different proposals on on how much of a skim they're going to take, right? Right. The the particular one that was being heard, of course, was to to get rid of the skim entirely. That was actually being put forward by by budget and finance. Um, which, well, which they should know. Me. I mean, they they're involved with it, right? Uh, it's, it's the Speaker of the House came up with a proposal to, to knock down the 10% to 5%. Uh, there was a, a key senator uh, who uh, basically said, well, okay, we can, we can do this perpetual, perpetually, but you've got to um, make, make our share a third of it, wow. rather than the 10%. So different ideas, different approaches are floating around, definitely. Any any sense at this point? I know it's very early, but any sense that you're picking up on what might be the, the course of least resistance to get this settled? I, I think there's a lot of sentiment toward extending it uh, to some degree. I, I, I and I don't know if people have figured out how long they can stomach. Mm. Um, I, I, I don't know if at least the money chairs will have an appetite to make it perpetual. I mean, you know, the, the, uh, the mayor is beating the drum, the council is beating the drum, but, but we, we don't really know if, uh, you know if, the, if the money chairs can take that. I mean, they, 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 were, they were the ones who really held the line last time. Uh, in, you know, two years ago when, when the mayor came to, to town and was asking for precisely the same thing, uh, the subject matter chairs were willing to give him like 20 years, uh, but it was the it was the money chairs who really you know it kind of put held the, the line to and, it, yeah. and, and, and put the skids on it. Wow. Well, thank goodness for that. Um, so it, it sounds like what I'm hearing is that there may be a way to get it extended for a, a fixed period of time, um, and my guess is that the state will get some kind of a skim from that, but we don't know how much yet. All right, well, that's, that's interesting. And I guess, you know, a, a wild card in all of this uh, is going to be whether or not the, the feds continue with their funding of the project itself too, right? Right. The um, feds have given the state until I think April to come up with a, um, a revised financial plan. Uh, and I, I think the city is basically going to argue that one key component of the financial plan is uh, whether and to, to what extent the, the surcharge is extended. Mm -hmm. So they, they, they may just say, well, you know, we, we have to figure that out first and, and then we can give you the plan. Well, and if they don't give the plan, then there's some risk involved that the, the feds may take a step back from it. Yeah, uh, I, I, I think the, the risk can't be underestimated. Yeah. Um, we, we have a new administration in place. They may not be as as supportive to Hawaii as the previous one was? Well, and I believe um, the new sheriff in town, uh, President Trump, has already released, I think, the top 50 infrastructure projects in the country, and this one was not on that list. Uh, yeah, that, that would be, uh, I would be surprised if it were. Yeah, yeah. And, and so that's, that's a signal, you know, I, I think, or at least identifies that there is a risk you know, to them not putting a high priority on this. So it's going to be interesting times. But there's other tax issues floating around, too. There's, uh, I guess, more direct to individuals. Um, I've, I've heard that there's, they're trying to bring back some additional tax rates that they had uh, let lapse before, and now they're reinstituting them again. Yeah, yeah, there are several proposals out there to play with the, you know, the top income tax rates uh, under the rubric of, OK, well, let's soak the rich, mm -hmm. right? So our, our top tax rate now is eight and a quarter percent, which is, you know, in, in, in terms of uh, the country, we're about the higher than the middle of the pack. We're not at the top. 
Um, we used to be at the top before California beat us, mm -hmm. uh, but that's you know n not a great trophy to you know, no, be proud of. That's not something you want to brag about. <laughs> yeah, uh, but. Uh, there are various proposals around. Uh, some would bring back the 9, 10, and 11 percent talk rates that we used to have, um, and, and, and those w would not be temporary. You know, one of the um, uh, maybe points that some people miss is that maybe our rates may not be as high as some others, but we get to the top fairly quickly. Um, is that still true today? Actually, we, we get to like 6% very quickly. Um, f uh, and then from 6 to 8, somewhat quickly. Uh, after that, it takes a while to get to the 9, 10, and 11%. Okay. And, and what we're talking about is the income levels that will move you into a higher marginal tax bracket. So, uh, for example, in the, the first 20 or 25,000 might be at 6%, but then you slowly creep up to the higher rates. Yeah, well, actually, it's, it's, it's even worse than that. I mean, somebody who is living at the federal poverty line, mm. right? Um, and that's, that's all they have? That's 6%. Wow. They're, they're 6% already. <laughs> Because you, you get to there, at, I think the first ten thousand uh, of, yeah, of, of I, I knew that those 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 brackets were pretty low, but I didn't. I haven't looked at them in years, and that's too bad. I guess it hasn't kept up with inflation then. No, oh, no, no. The the, uh, the lower section of the uh, the brackets haven't been revised since the sixties, I believe. Wow. Well, and for some reason they still can't make ends meet, so they got to keep coming up with the new taxes. So I guess these new rates that they're bringing back will help put some more money into it. Um, you know, I guess the, the permanency of the, the rail tax. Um, we've got some other taxes that they're talking to about. I, I, some of them, I, I, again, back to a personal level, uh, it's going to get more expensive to drive a car. Yeah, one of the things that was happening last year was that the uh, Department of Transportation had come in and, and they asked for tax uh, increases on three things, one being the fuel tax, so you know, the, the number of cents per gallon. Uh, second being vehicle weight tax, and third being vehicle registration. The, uh, the latest version to cross uh, the, the Senate would have given them uh, approximately uh, 30 bucks more in vehicle registration, one cent a pound more in vehicle weight tax. Now, you know, most typical cars weigh two tons. Okay, so 4,000 pounds uh, times even a penny is still 40 bucks. Mm -hmm. So it's, and it's, how many it's vehicles? I mean, we've got a, a few hundred thousand vehicles, right? So that adds up to some pretty decent money pretty quick. Right, and and they had come in asking for uh, three cents in the in the gas tax. Yeah. Okay. The current bill asks for six. Whoa, double. A, a six cent increase in the gas tax. Yeah. Again, and this is only the state's share. We know that some counties um, want to, like like Mayor Caldwell. Uh, they're, they're going to be coming up with a proposal to increase the county portion of the gas tax and the uh, uh, weight tax and the vehicle registration. So uh, and if you've paid maybe 300 bucks to, uh, to register, re register your car, I mean, I, I did. Um, the next time you do that, uh, it may be substantially more than 300. Wow. And, and they're also... Um and, and this may be a little bit old news, but they also played around with some of the real estate taxes too. You know, that is catching some people by surprise. I mean, a lot of people are finding their real estate taxes shot way up. You know, I guess because of, um, I guess uh, whether they filed the exemption or not, or whether or not they've got it as an investment property or not, um, or they didn't register it. And I, I'm hearing that some people's uh, real estate taxes have gone up by 20, 30, 40%. Okay, so you're talking about real property taxes? Yes. Well, if, if that's the case, um, you'd be interested in what, the, what, the, um, what is being planned for education. Uh-oh. Well, we're going to have to take a short break, but uh, I want to hold that thought, and we want to talk about some of the education taxes uh, when we come back. Uh, but this is Business in Hawaii with Reg Baker. I'm here with the Tax Foundation and Tom Yamachika, uh, and we're... we're hopefully not scaring too many people too much, uh, but we are talking about some significant tax increases that uh, could be happening here in the near future. We'll be right back. Aloha, my name is Richard Emery, and I host Condo Insider. We talk about issues facing the Condo Association throughout Hawaii and talk about solutions. 
when you think about it, about one third of our population lives in some form of common interest real estate. We broadcast every Thursday at 3 p.m. Please tune in. Tune in and thank you. Aloha. You're watching Think Tech Hawaii, meeting people we may not have otherwise met and helping us understand and appreciate the good things about Hawaii. Great content for Hawaii from Think Tech. Hi, I'm Tim Apicella. I'm the host for Moving Hawaii Forward. And the show is dedicated to transportation and traffic issues in Oahu. Um, we are all frustrated by sitting in our cars uh, in bumper to bumper traffic. And this show is dedicated to talking to, with folks that not only we can define the problem, but we hopefully can come to the table with some solutions. So I invite you to join me every Tuesday at 12 noon and let's move Hawaii forward. Welcome back. This is Business in Hawaii with Reg Baker. I'm here with the Tax Foundation and Tom Yamachika. Uh, we're talking about some of the uh, different tax uh, bills that are floating around in the legislature this year. Uh, and we were just about ready to, to get into uh, some education uh, taxes that are there. Uh, but just to clarify, I guess, um, you know, my, my comment about the real property taxes had to do with, I, I guess that's a little bit old news, that's a couple of years ago or so, but um, it was an additional tax on some dollar amount. Uh... Yeah, so, so the way it works, and, and it's specific to the city and county of Honolulu, mm -hmm. uh, but if you have a, a piece of real estate that's, that's zoned residential, and has no home exemption on it. So it's, it's maybe a rental property or uh, a second home or something like that. Uh, it gets taxed at a higher rate. So mm -hmm. the, the normal uh, residential rate is 350 per $1,000 of assessed valuation. So a million dollar home would be $3,500 assessed uh, if, you, you know, if you live in it. And it's $6. Cool. So it would be a $6,000 tax bill, 70% 70, 70 higher. Uh, if you don't qualify for the home exemption. Okay, and that's that was was what catching some people by surprise was that they maybe they just weren't following it. They weren't as aware of it as maybe they should have. And then when it kicked in and they sent the bill, they go, "Whoa, what's this?" Exactly. Yeah, and then for some reason they they end up calling their CPA and not a lot we can do about it. Yeah, if it's <laughs> if it's happened, it's happened. Yeah, exactly. All right, so. Uh, we've, we've covered a little bit about transportation taxes. We've talked about income taxes. Uh, we've talked about property then, taxes. And then along, along the lines of the property taxes, let me tell you what, uh, what's happening in education. Okay, that's what we're now, we can talk about education. Right. Okay. So uh, you, you remember how the, um, uh, the education interests uh, last session came in with a proposal to raise the GET to 5%. Mm -hmm. Uh, this year they're taking kind of a different, uh, a different tactic. They're, they're saying, okay, instead of doing that, what we are going to ask for is a surcharge on real property. Mm. So, um, uh, so you, they call it like investment real property, but, it, but their criteria for it is basically the same as residential A, uh, except without the, the, the threshold valuation amount. So any property that's residential, for which there's no home exemption would be subject to the surcharge, okay? And the surcharge uh, is graduated to the, to the value of the property, but at, uh, at a million dollars, if, it, if it's at a little less than a million dollars, the surcharge is 550, okay? Mm -hmm. so, so you start off with 350, which is your normal rate, mm -hmm. add the surcharge of 550, wow. and, and your bill goes from 3500 to nine grand. Well, now, now, Tom, traditionally, from my experience, property taxes was usually used to fund education. At least that's the way I've seen it work on the mainland. Right, that's how it works in the mainland. Okay, um, it's a little different here, though. Right, uh, here we have centralized uh, uh, DOE, mm -hmm. uh, which means that the schools are funded from the state. Okay. They're administered by the state. They're funded by the state. So, so we have state tax funding. Them. So that 350 will still go to the state, but then the additional 550 or five uh, would end up going specifically to the schools. Yeah. Well, the 350 goes to the city. Oh, oh I'm sorry. I'm sorry. The city. Yeah. Okay. Right. And the 550 would go to the state to fund the schools. Okay. Okay. But the, but the uh, I guess the good thing about it uh, is that would require a constitutional amendment. So. This can't be done unless the voters approve it. So you have to, they have to put it on the ballot 
which would uh, be like, you know, not this year, but next year. And the voters would have to vote on it. And if that's what they want to do, then, you know, that's what they want to do. But, uh, but it can't be done without a constitutional amendment. Mm -hmm. It makes the process a little bit more complicated, a little bit more drawn out, or it'll take a little bit longer for it to get done. Yeah, uh, but but right now, uh, the property tax is, uh, it's the county's property. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, 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 it's what they want to do with it. And, and they're having you know, some big disputes right now about uh, how much additional money they're going to get from the transient accommodations tax. They've been fighting that fight for a number of years. Well, who are the supporters for that additional five uh, dollars uh, for the property tax for the schools? I mean, I, I got from my readings, I, I got the sense that it was a union-backed initiative to help provide funding to the teachers. Yeah, my suspicion would and with that would be that it's HSTA. Yeah, yeah, and so this is going to be what, what would seem to be a very large increase in revenues that's going to go into the Department of Education. It would be, I think, uh, half a billion dollars. Half a billion dollars. Um, and, and I'm already hearing you know, some pushback on what they're currently getting, and that there's a, a number of dollars being wasted and not being very efficiently used. And so this is just going to give them another half a billion dollars that uh, may not just, it may not fix anything. You know, I, I think we're, we're throwing dollars at something that may have more of a, a need to be fixed rather than throw dollars at it. Well, that's that's kind of an operational question. <laughs> All right. Um, so let me let me get back to uh, you know there, there's another area that we talked about uh, you know just prior to the show about the Affordable Care Act and um, something that was uh, being discussed and, and possibly worked on here. And can you explain that to us? Sure. Um, right now, the Affordable Care Act, sometimes known as Obamacare, uh, has what's called an individual mandate, which, which basically means that you, uh, every individual is required to buy insurance for his or herself and their dependents. Mm -hmm. okay. And if you don't, if you have no coverage and, and, no, and no excuse, no, no exception applies, right. then you get hit with a, a penalty, and, and the, the penalty is about 600 bucks. Right. Right. Um, and it's probated for each month that you're not covered. Okay. Well, um, there are people who apparently believe that uh, with um, the Republicans and President Trump now in power, uh, a lot of what is now Obamacare is going to go away. Right. Okay. I mean, they've they've said they've it talked much. about it. Yeah. Yeah. And 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 these people here uh, apparently have the belief that well, if if Obamacare on the mainland is going to go away, we're going to have it. We're going to have it here. Okay. So the proposal is for there to be a, uh, an income tax penalty if you don't have um, appropriate insurance coverage for yourself and your dependents in Hawaii. In Hawaii, okay. okay. But the, the interesting thing is none of the exemptions are in the bill now. So uh, it, it, even under Obamacare, if you're out of the country or if you're in prison, Mm -hmm. Or if you, or if you really can't afford it, there's exemptions. There, there are exemptions. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. There are no exemptions in Hawaii, or the, uh, at least not under this version. Of the bill. Okay. So the the current version that's being talked about right now is it everybody who files a tax return. That's right. Has to have insurance in Hawaii for the whole year. For the whole year, even if they're not a resident of Hawaii. That's right. So for people who have to file a Hawaii return that maybe live in California or Nevada or somewhere else, but because they've got rental properties over here and they have to file a, a state tax return for that income, um, even though they've got coverage already, they have to get coverage a second time under the current bill, the way it's written. They'd have to be covered again. In or, the, or they'd have to have a policy that meets the requirements. Meets, meets the Hawaii-specific okay. requirements. And that's, you know, and, and just for the, the benefit of the audience, uh, I was with HMAA for a number of years, and I was involved in, in a lot of the, um, what they call the prevalent plan discussions, uh, and the uh, Prepaid Health Care Act in Hawaii uh, has a prevalent plan bar that is set very high, and all of the insurance... Reg knows insurance. 
<laughs> and all of the insurance plans that are done through the Prepaid Health Care Act has to hit that minimum plan. And that minimum plan, uh, prevalent plan level, is normally at the gold or um, platinum, platinum level. level. Yeah. And which means it's, it's got a lot of coverage. It's, it's good, a good solid plan, uh, which is great for Hawaii and it's great for our health needs here. Uh, but on the mainland, they don't have those types of requirements. So if they had, say, a bronze or a silver, silver level, that wouldn't count. They'd still have to get some sort of additional coverage to meet the minimum plan levels here in Hawaii. That's the way it's currently written. I, I would hope that some logic would prevail and that they would address that type or have some sort of an exemption for that. Otherwise, it could get pretty complicated when it comes tax time. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, a lot of... Uh, the, the bill right now, in, in my humble opinion, doesn't make any sense. Mm -hmm. But there's a lot of bills like that, aren't there? I'm sorry. That was another operational issue. <laughs> 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 All right. Um, well, what else? Is, anything else that's uh, going on over there that uh, is just kind of surprising when it comes to taxes? Or there, there's a lot of stuff over there. Um, there, there are there are things um, that uh, you, know, you kind of look at them and you and you kind of shake your head. Uh, there, there's, for example, there's a uh, there's there's a bill that would uh, exempt helicopters from the uh, the general excise tax. Well, they're, they're already exempt. Uh, I mean, because of federal law. There's a, there's a federal law that applies to airlines, and it says basically that you can't apply a gross receipts tax to uh, proceeds f uh, for passenger or cargo transportation by air, mm. period. Uh, the, the, the state didn't believe it. They litigated the issue. They lost, okay? In, 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 the, in the early 1980s, U.S. Supreme Court, 8 to 0, uh, which is... That's a, that's a loss. That's a loss. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I must apologize. We have run out of time. we got to wrap things up. But, you know, Tom, I, I always enjoy having you here. You, you add uh, a lot of interesting facts and figures to the tax situation. Uh, it makes me a little nervous and apprehensive, but I'm hoping that uh, common sense prevails and what we'll end up with is something that may cost us a little bit, but maybe not as much as they really want. So uh, we'll have to have you come back after the uh, session's over and, and kind of give us an update on what actually happened. Yeah, thank but, you, Reg. It was, it was great to be here. All right. Thanks, Tom. This is Business in Hawaii with Reg Baker. We broadcast live every Thursday at 2 o'clock from 2 to 2.30. Hope to see you next week. Until then, aloha.